So we were working a job here on Frederick Road when we all smelled something burning. When we looked around our equipment, it wasn't our stuff. So what we did was I looked down the street and I noticed that there was smoke coming from between some trees. I walked down to investigate and I noticed that there was a car in between these trees and its tire was on fire. I immediately called 911. But as I'm on the phone with 911, giving them my location, I turned to my crew, Chris and Morgan, and I said, hey, come help me and bring the fire extinguishers with you. And then we grabbed them and came down here to where the car was at. Uh, I was on this side trying to suppress the fire in the engine compartment the whole time. Ricky's asking, is anybody in the car? I'm like, everybody's saying no, they don't hear or see nothing. We're starting to walk away from the car and I faintly hear somebody say, help. And I yelled at Ricky, there's somebody in the car. I took the fire extinguisher and slammed the back glass, had to hit it twice to get it to go in. Smoke was billowing out. Uh, Morgan then comes back. He has long arms. He's able to reach in. He reaches in. He unlocks the door, gets it open. The gentleman inside the car at the time is grabbing my arm. I could feel him trying to tug on me. Now we're already in FR PPE. We're in fire retardant PPE. As we go to reach in to get the guy out of the car, the front driver's side tire blows up. I grabbed the guy by his shoulders, but when I tried to pull him out of the car, his foot was wedged in between the brake and the gas pedal. So Morgan reached in and dragged him right out of his shoes. So we leaned down to grab a hold him to roll him over. I happened to look under the car and say, the fuel line is lit, fellas. We gotta go, we gotta go. We each grabbed you know, a leg and an arm and we had to carry him across the street. So we get the gentleman over here. We finally get him turned over. His eyes are bloodshot red. His legs went limp, his arms went limp. His eyes started rolling toward the back of his head. We got down. Chris was at the head, he started supporting his head. I immediately start chest compressions, still I'm, pumping his chest, and he and starts I'm, screaming. Yeah. He goes, ow, ow, ow. And, and I was good, I was good, I was good. <laughs> He's yeah. taking a couple deep breaths, and we kind of stopped. And thankfully, EMS and the fire department were showing up right at this time that we were able to get him stabilized and at least breathing on his own. So once they arrived, they were able to come down and take over for us to you know, give us a break. We realized that the life-saving skills that we've learned through our career, actually we were able to put it into action. And then not only did you put it into action, it worked. We were successful, especially when the fire chief came over and said that the guy would end up living. Yeah, I think just the, the teamwork of all three of us combined with the contractors, I mean, it was split-second decision-making. And I mean, if you know, a minute later, it could have been a different story. We not only care about the safety of ourselves, we care about the safety and the public. And, uh, you know, we wish this guy the best of health and hopefully a, a wonderful return to life.